Hey everyone, welcome again to another episode of Disability Landscape. It's Mark and I here again, and with uh, someone who has uh, been with us a couple times as a, uh, a guitarist guest. and singer, Yep, a guest host, and now he's a painter, and we can't wait to see what he does next month. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, great. Thank, thank, thanks for coming. I guess the, to, okay. um, I guess the basic question to start off kind of is, uh, how long have you been painting and what got you, uh, you know, into painting? Did you do painting? Because you, you, you did have an accident. So, you know, kind of just yeah, so how you got all started and when. As far as the art kind of started my life when I was a little kid. Okay. Just oh. uh, scribbling on paper. Yeah. Um, being at Grandma and Grandpa's farm again, seems like everything goes back to there. <laughs> um, when it's raining or, you know, there was nothing to do or at night oh, uh, so you before would, bed. I was, I would draw a lot with pencil. Just sure. basically was pencil and pen is what I had and paper. Okay. Um, so I would doodle a lot. Um, I did have an uncle that told me that I should probably become a taxidermist just because I was drawing animals and stuff at a <laughs> pretty young age and I guess it looked pretty good. To me it, it looked two dimensional, not three dimensional. So I was always struggling with that part where I wanted to make stuff a little better and just kept kind of just doodled on my notebooks at school instead of doing some of my schoolwork. Oh, I was okay. filling up my notebooks with stuff and I would you know like listening to a lecture I would actually listen but I would sit and draw the whole time right. and then on the way out of class I just throw that sucker in the garbage so that way nobody <laughs> no evidence of what I was right, doing right, all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so now Steve uh, you do a pretty broad spectrum of kind of art you do and you've got some with us today why don't we take a look at some of that. All right. And you can kind of explain and show us what we got here. Yeah, so I do, I paint a lot of, I paint on canvas. I normally use acrylic paint. I do a little bit of oil. I just started the oil. I dabbled in oil in high school. I got introduced to painting and stuff in high school. Had a good art teacher that taught us about every artist and everything. I don't remember much about who's who or what style is what. I just took the techniques that she shared right. with these, from these artists. They kind of, obviously somebody figured out how they did certain things, cross hatching, different things of, for textures and whatnot, but I started painting with acrylic um, again about 10 years ago and decided to paint on canvas, basically just to decorate my house is how it all started. <laughs> was I got a gift certificate from Michaels from my grandma one year at Christmas and I went there and for 25 bucks you can't really buy much except for canvas. And this and was some, before your accident, right? Uh, or, this is after the injury. Oh, okay, so you got so, into so you basically did the pencil drawing and, and yeah, sorry. doodling and then after your yeah. accident. Doodled, took art classes in high school and yeah. didn't do, you know, just, just worked on an art class outside of art or yeah. school. I wasn't really doing anything. I did start painting houses when I was about <laughs> 17, 18. Yeah. So I was yeah. using latex paint and right, interior, right. exterior. Yeah. I got good with the brush there. So I kind of knew how paint flowed and oh, okay. um, they nicknamed me laser because I could cut in real good ceiling lines. Oh. I just kind of figured out how you can plow the paint to make a nice line yeah. and it, even though the ceiling's like this you can just hit these points and then it looks like it's flat so I mean it was just something that I I learned the painting but yeah so then fast yeah. forward 25 years I'm I break my neck motocross injury yeah. um, become a quadriplegic and then three years after that I'm in a house with a uh, relationship didn't go so well and I'm in an empty house and I'm like, all right, I got to try to figure out how to decorate these walls. And <laughs> so that's like when I punch them out. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's when I got that gift certificate. So I went to Michael's and, okay. and then I went to the aisle where you'd buy something and I looked around and I was like, well, shoot, you can't really buy anything and anything that I can afford. It's just one small little piece and I got some wall space. So I bought some canvases and paint and just started doing it for myself. And then it, uh, so people yeah, let's talk about your yeah. different different paintings like so you, were, you were. I think I started on about this size canvas, which is like a 16 by 20 inch canvas. I started using acrylic paint and just started doodling and doing more abstract stuff. But then it just evolved to using more brushes, different, more patience. And I just, I started, so this is a winter scene that I did. Um, this is a dog of my actual dog that I started. Uh, I had did that dog painting for one of his trainers actually commissioned me to paint him. She said she enjoyed him in class and at the Helping Paws over here in Hopkins, cool. Minnesota. And so she was like, could you commission, I'd like to commission you to do a painting of Duke. So you're willing to take uh, yes. other, yeah. other commission, Which is, other people contacting you. And, 
and, it, and doing, uh, well, that's where the money is, Mark. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's it, what I thought. <laughs> pe people have pushed me outside of my box. Like, I've just been painting for stuff for the walls and whatnot. And okay. So she asked if I could do that, and I, uh, I really enjoyed it. And I didn't, and people are like, well, you don't have a painting of your dog. You paint a lot of people's dogs, and you don't have a painting of your dog. So I did that one for her, and then I was like, I want one. So I started, right, right. so that one's <laughs> in, in, in the works, I guess, of, and I don't normally repeat something, but it's something that I, like I say, I just wanted to mm -hmm. start. So that's unfinished, and um, that's on a stretch canvas as well. The painting that's next to it, that is actually a print of the original. The original is big. The original is 30 inches by 40 inches, wow, okay. so rather large. Same with the one next to it. That one's also 30 inches by 40 inches. I sold um, some original paintings. I sell them, and immediately after I sell it, somebody wants that. <laughs> and so I was like, all right, so I, well, people are like, do you make prints? And I kind of looked into uh -huh. it and it costs quite a bit of money to kind of get going to make mm -hmm. professional prints. Um, there's different levels. So if a person were to go to my website and check out my Steve Murrell artwork, they can click and find these different paintings and then click on maybe a size, whether you want it printed on canvas, paper, um, foam core, like that's foam core that's framed. So it's not actually a canvas or anything. It's actually a foam core that it's printed on. Okay. And the price varies too. So you can have it professionally done um, to the point that it literally is almost painted on the canvas. It's a repeat of it, but it's, so there's tons of different price levels for different sizes. Yeah. We can print on glass, people, or I mean metal. Um, it looks like glass. Oh, and, really? Which is really neat. So, so what do you use, acrylic then? What do you use? Um, to no. So I painted these paintings and then I hire a photographer to come in and we get the lighting all perfect and oh, okay. get the camera just right and go ahead and get a high definition photo of it and then it put, gets cropped and then puts on onto glass then okay yeah it gets printed through a company like I tend to use White House is somebody here out of the cities that I they seem to do a really really good job mm -hmm. um, there's other companies that I try because people are like you know this is our budget and so if people contact me and they say, I like this, but it's this much, here's my budget, I yeah. can usually give them a different direction. And then they still have original artwork. And a lot of people have actually, to make it even more original, um, they, they get the print and then they have me go back and do something else to it. Because they're like, you know, could you just add this? Or could you add another person? Or could you, um, there's mm -hmm. different things that, I'm usually willing to work with people on that stuff. So. So I have a wide variety of sizes. Um, the biggest painting I've painted was four foot by five foot, Ooh. which is large. Yeah. And I how do you how do you even do yeah, that? How do you even, yeah, I mean, <laughs> do you have a right. booster chair then, or I mean, so, <laughs> so no, actually, this what I did is I built a table myself just out of plywood, okay. a workstation, and I kind of would drape it across it, but with all my paint set up and stuff, there wasn't enough room, so. And I was struggling, the bigger I got with canvases, of reaching the center. Yeah. And not yeah. having finger dexterity to hold the brush, like the brush will tip over the further it gets away from me and stuff. Oh, and it does? Okay. So there's different things. I was like, all right, I'm struggling. So I started trying to build something that would work to hold different canvas sizes, but I wanted it to move up, down, maybe turn. Sure. Right. And so I started researching on the internet, is there anybody out there that does anything? And there's a 360 easel is what I just typed in to see if it would... Mm -hmm. And this popped up. This is a artistic easel, A R T R I S T I C, easel, and it's made in Australia. But parts are from all all over in the world. I contacted the company just to tell them how good of a product they have, because that four foot by five foot I did on this. They do not recommend that. They rec the biggest they recommend is four foot by four foot. But I had this idea that I was going to do this big lake mm. scene, and right, it right. was more for me. And so. I just made extensions off of this because these pieces up here, they telescope out and, and then there's little picks that you see the little red handles and with a little screw and prick and it just kind of grabs on. You can have it hold on to the outside of the canvas. You can have it hold on to the back side of the canvas. Okay. Um, there's normally four spots, but then you can see this canvas is too small that if you put it in the center, these wouldn't collapse to hold it. Sure. You can, they actually made it so there's different ways of holding all different size canvases and then these legs are adjustable so when I did the four foot by five foot one I needed to get really really close to try to get to the center even though I had it vertical so it was basically just a couple inches off the floor my feet fit just underneath it so I could kind of get up to it 
and then I could paint the center because if it was laying down I couldn't reach the center and then see if I did I did a painting that was rather large I stood it up and it looked like the horizon line was falling off the painting huh. are you oh I was gonna say are you able to paint and talk at the same yes. time yes all right <laughs> all right well yeah let's get a little demonstration right. here of how this works for you so didn't have fing no finger dexterity I used my tenons to kind of just hold things mm -hmm. and I got someone help me get set up here so yep. but a lot of times I'm just and I'm gonna actually do a little something just to speed up the process and show you kind of how this works like that can move up it would take me a long time to sit and dab to get some paint going here on the canvas mm. so a lot of times I'll just go ahead and I'm gonna do like a sunset for you okay and then I, I use different brushes sometimes I use business cards to do different things oh for uh, a brush yeah oh yeah like, okay yeah um, just, just kind of spread things around differently and yeah so if I'm doing an abstract painting versus so because I would have had a dip like a lot of times right there but now all of a sudden oh, I right. can get, I see what you, okay, so I see get what some progress saying. going here yeah, make it a little quicker yeah. than dipping so, I mean, all the time. If I'm doing something for someone very particular, I will take the time and probably dip the brushes and be more methodical about it. Since but, we don't have the TV magic. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to just get some paint going here. Yeah. And I'll show you kind of so, how I blend. Um, you don't have any particular influences then when it comes to painting. You basically started just the doodling and... and it, it, it just kind of grew into this? Is that how that happened? Yeah, I, I feel like the, probably the person that inspired me the most or saw the little bit of whatever, the, how I see things, was that art teacher that I had in high school. Um, she, the reason I kind of knew that there was something was I decided to be done with school a little early and went and got a GED. And when I decided to quit school, I went and cleared out my art locker. and I threw it all in the garbage. And uh, she ended up picking all that stuff up out of the garbage and drove it to my parents' place. And <laughs> oh. So she was one of the people that made me think like, oh, that's worth more than the garbage? So you s saw some value in what you were doing. Yeah. But otherwise, as far as artists, I don't really follow anybody. I've just had uh, artistic friends that are like, hey, can you do this or can you do that? Or have you checked out this artist? And mm -hmm. a lot of times I don't. I quick look and then... I don't really, I don't have one person that sticks out. I liked all the artists' stories of, basically, I found out that a lot of the successful artists faced a lot of challenges in their life. Sure. And so that was something that made me feel a little more at home with. What kind of challenges would, 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 are you, would you say? Just well, the financial or just um, personal, like mental health challenges? Yeah, or? both financial as well as. Yeah, the mental, physical. Yeah, it seems and like physical. It was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in the uh, abstract type painting that like you displayed here, um, is there a starting point? I mean, do you start from the center? How do you, you know, how do you decide where the picture begins? Uh, usually, I start with just picking out the colors. Okay. So I kind of just go ahead and um, lay out a bunch of colors and see pull the caps off the bottles and maybe even pour a little bit on the canvas and just kind of see if it's going to work together. Okay. And a lot of times I will actually pour the paint right on the canvas in different spots and I figure out every time I do a painting I learn something. Uh -huh. Like I learn like, ooh, that blue looks really good with that purple or uh, different things and then sometimes... Your, your, your winter picture has got a lot of details to it. So you, yeah, you're kind of having to work in certain areas just to make it all, you know, the depth look and, 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 and that. Yeah. So there you have to kind of start some, generally kind of start and build and build from there just because of the the detail of, of the tree, the, the branches, the shadows and that. Yes. A lot of times those I start with the background and work my way forward out of the painting. So, oh, okay, go for the lowest level. I yeah, go the for move. the furthest away. The furthest, and work furthest, away. yeah, work your way in. Okay. Yeah, because otherwise you're going to have to sit and paint your sky around a tree. Yeah. And yeah, oh, right, 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 and yeah. I've learned to, to a lot of the mistakes, just like put a bigger tree there. 
Like when the tree's not looking good, just cover it up with a bigger one. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I, I, for a while I tried to do a little wood carving. And, yeah, you had to kind of start with, uh, yeah, the furthest, <laughs> the furthest part and, and, and work your way. And then for your different drawings, I mean, obviously the, the dog one is one that you had a specific, I mean, did you just go from your remembering of what your dog looked like or do you have a picture of right. your dog? I mean, I, I can't imagine you got your dog to sit there. <laughs> That's what right, everybody right. says. How'd you get him to I don't sit so long. long. <laughs> right. So the gal just, you know, like the commission request was just, a, I want a headshot of Duke. And then they give you a picture. And I, I had this weird thought. I was like, Duke's all black. But when I look at him in the light, like if I just paint a black blob, it's just going to be look like a black blob. And I noticed that his hair looks kind of blue. I pay attention to a lot of just kind of the way like color comes off, different things off the water. Okay. Um, and so I paid attention. I was like, oh, there's, there's a lot of like blues and different hints of gray. And so then I thought I just, for some reason, was at the paint store and they have pre-primed black canvases. And I'm like, I'm just going to buy one of those and just try it. And I got it home and I ended up painting something else on it. And so then I, I had that idea and it, it just later built to where I'm, I'm okay. going to try it. And, and so then I did and I was like, ooh, that looks neat. Just yeah. the, because I'm, I'm just hitting the highlights of where the light hits versus yeah. painting all of the, the other part and then trying to add the, the highlights. And so, you're just going off of what you're seeing yeah. you know, from, the, from the animal, yeah. from the dog. And that. Is there a commission you've ever said no to? Um. <laughs> Come on, we're community TV. I so say, no. yeah. I've, been, uh, I've, I've been asked, if, if you look at my Steve Miller artwork page, you'll see in the commission thing, there's a lot of paintings that, there will be a couple in there that are commission pieces that maybe don't fit my style or are just took me into another style of painting. <laughs> right, um, right, yeah. So I've, yeah, I, I cover a lot of, like as far as, if I don't know what class I would fall in because yeah. I do. But there's something new and different you wanna at least venture into for a little bit. Yeah. Definitely and you wanna do that. I stay kind of, I don't get burnt out that way, painting different things. But, yeah. Um, I don't think that there's, I feel like maybe a dog in the beginning, I didn't feel comfortable doing dogs just because okay. I felt like I wasn't going to do it perfect. I feel like people, when they hire me to do a commission piece, want it to look like a picture. Yeah. And so I struggle with that mentally. Yeah, because I, I would think that would be tough with it with is. a dog or a person. Yes. Some because they're expecting a. a <clears throat> so you're right. Actually, people I usually say no to and refer them to a friend because <laughs> there's other friends of mine that can just that could do the same. Yeah, that, for them phenomenal job at doing people so I I've dabbled a little bit um, but people are something that are definitely a big challenge for me just because of the the okay. tone of the skin and the detail and the oh, amount of time right. yeah complexion and, and 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 all yeah yeah and I usually have multiple pieces going so I don't get so burnt out I I try to do an abstract one while I'm doing uh, maybe a commission piece as well as maybe a deep detailed piece that I just want to do Okay. And that kind of seems to keep me happy mm -hmm. and focused. So with your, you know, your varied interest in music and the art, and is there a, a balance that you strike with between the two, or how does that work out for you? Um, the, the art was more just, like I say, it was supposed to be kind of a back burner, mm -hmm. uh, just me decorating and keeping going. Um, with COVID, that okay. helped a lot because I, I wasn't out playing music gigs, and... Right. Make, I need that income to basically just make my world go around. Social sure. security is not quite enough. And, yeah. Um, so being able to sell the paintings online kind of took off during the COVID. For me, it took off. Is it super explosive? Not really. But yeah. for how much I'm producing, yes, it's going right. really well. Like right. it, lately, it seems like everything I produce gets sold almost right away. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I do have stuff in a gallery in New Richmond. It's called Ink Junkie. Okay. Fine art gallery. They do tattoos as well, but the front of it is uh, art gallery. So I've got some paintings there. Right now, I've also got some stuff at the Stillwater Dunn Brothers Coffee House. Oh, okay. Um, 
And then I've also got stuff at the Wild Violet up in Osceola, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. That's a new little place that's a floral shop slash selling all kinds of different little knickknacks and antiques. Um, an artist friend of mine opened or started that place. After, or it's been going, but they're, yeah. they're kind of changing it a little bit. So check that out if you can. Um, the website is where I've been selling a lot of the work. And what is the website? Uh, SteveMiro.com. Okay. And then as you go on there, you can see different things. There should be a painting sign, or you can click up on the top, click paintings, and it'll mm -hmm. take you to Steve Merrill Artwork. And that's, I uh, use a Pixie store, so that way people can actually purchase the stuff online. Mm -hmm. uh, I usually finalize everything, make sure the order goes through right, make sure the product is right. And yeah. I have had issues with prints being damaged or not stretched or it, color wasn't quite right. right. The companies have been really good with me recalibrating and trying until we get the right thing. So, okay. I, I know how to sp spell Steve, but how do you spell your whole name then? Yeah. Last yeah. name is M I R E A U. Yeah, so Steve, Steve M I R E A U. Yeah. Dot com. Dot yep. com. <laughs> or you just, can punch just like in it is on the web yeah. on, on our show right now. So, and if you punch in Steve Merrill artwork, it'll probably take you there too. I've got a Facebook page that's Steve Merrill artwork. Okay. okay. So, um, Facebook has been a place that I I tend to post it and that and Instagram, and people see stuff and then they contact me and a lot of people see something that I did, and then it sparks them to ask me if I'll do this or do that. Oh, right, right, yeah. And some people are like, yeah, well, we've got to plant that seed. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, how does that process start? I'm like, it's literally just communicating about what their interest is. And maybe I possibly ask them to send me some pictures of what they're thinking, yeah. roughly. Uh, we talk about colors. Sometimes we'll meet in person and actually pick out the colors together. I'll meet them right at the paint store. So that oh, way, okay. if they're doing it to kind of decorate a room versus it being some of the big abstract pieces, I've worked with clients to help bring the whole room together. Sure. Okay. And you my incorporate colors and, and themes and such. Yeah. So my experience painting the houses, I worked around a lot of interior designers and decorators sure. and realtors, and they found out the fads of what works really good and what's selling. And so I, I did pay attention to that. So <laughs> sometimes I might paint more off. I know these colors work together more than. Okay. Now you you, you mentioned that you know the easel. That company kind of um, designed their easel for individuals with disabilities. But what about like paintbrushes? Is there any other um, things out there that are designed specifically for a, a disabled artist that's doing painting or anything? Uh, not that I know of. I haven't yeah. researched it too much. I sometimes these brushes I use because they have a almost like a silicone material. So I'm not really holding on to the brush. It, it yeah, would I was kind of, is the whole brush silicone or is it just that top? Uh, just it look, the top. Yeah, there looks like the, the so top area has got a, a different kind of material, so. When I get the ones that don't have that on them, I bought Plasti Dip, mm -hmm. and oh. then I just go ahead and turn them upside down, dip them in the Plasti Dip, and it gives it that grippy feel. It gives them that grip, yeah, yeah. so you, yeah. And okay. the beginning, I, I, I was so frustrated about, like when I would try to, it would just kind of like fall out of my hand. Oh, right, yeah. And I got sick of like, I'd be like this, and now I want to spin it, but I want it to stay there and it would just, my hand would start spasming and it'll fall oh, into. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah. I took tape and just taped onto the thing and then flipped the tape over so it was half sticky, like two-sided tape basically. Sure. Is what I should have just used. <laughs> Instead I just used a roll of tape and made it sticky and then it stuck to my hand. And that's when I started doing more of the detail. I was like, all right, I just need to get the brushes to work better. These, for whatever the length of it, Having a big handle coming out here is awesome when you when you want to get rid of your wiggles because like it wiggles, my hand wiggles a lot, but it yeah. only wiggles a little bit out there, and like the wiggles can be happening. And I'll try to do like a tree, for instance, and I can, I don't know, I, I used to struggle with that like trying to get a smooth line because I would twitch and, okay. and then I found if you get a longer brush. Oh, that, that kind of absorbs it. It absorbs yeah. the twitch. Absorbs it, yeah. 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 So okay. you can do that. These shorter ones balance in my hand a lot better for doing this back and roll, to, back and forth, because otherwise okay. the handle gets heavy, it'll just fall right out. So a lot of trial and error with buying different products. And the latex works really good for me because if I do make a mess, 
I can sort of clean up, whereas the oil base is paint thinner and it's not coming off very good. Yeah. <laughs> now give, give me your honest opinion. How do you think me and Charlie would look in a, in a portrait? Top notch. <laughs> okay, and that's all we. <laughs> that's all. As long as I didn't paint it. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those are two nudes you wouldn't want to do. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we got to wrap up here real quick. But um, again, stevemoreau.com, and they can uh, search for your music and your art at the same site, correct? Correct. All right. Um, Mark? Yeah, no, great. Steve, it was nice having you. Again, I think from now on, you'll be on this side hosting unless you start creating, you start doing something new. But thank you for coming and, and sharing the, the painting and definitely look forward to having you back, helping us do some hosting in that. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. And yeah. we'll see you all next time, right? <laughs> That's a, exactly. There you go. You got that hosting he's, stuff down. He's got the line. <laughs> he's got the line. Steve. These Mark. guys got the looks. <laughs> <laughs> So that's Steve, that's Mark, that's Charlie, and this has been Disability Landscape. We'll see you next time.